Hello everyone, Remco from Heusingveld. I'm here today to talk you through the tutorial about setting up your SIM handbrake. Let's start with mounting. The handbrake comes supplied with a very sturdy, sturdy mounting plate. It is already threaded so you can mount it without washers or nuts. This is the plate already mounted to some AT20 profile, which many of you will be using. As you can see, it's perfectly straight here, but there are more holes here to uh, mount, a, uh, mount a handbrake in a yaw position. The mounting is super easy. Tina's come supplied this time, as well as these uh, M5 uh, bolts. You can easily screw them in and out with the uh, supplied wrenches. It's just a matter of tightening them and it's su secured in seconds. Now this is a, a, a very pronounced yaw. You can imagine if the handbrake is beside you and you want to pull on it straight, you never pull it back like this, but always a little bit towards you. In that case, you can mounted yard. There are a couple of options. Four holes here, four holes here. That means four positions on the front and also four positions in the back. Uh, eight positions in total. Next, lever position. You can already see there are many positions. You can mount the handbrake in the classic old school uh, position, which I prefer or in the modern rally uh, position or drifting if that's your thing. And I'm going to talk you through the process of uh, inverting the lever. Now let's talk about lever position. There are many positions to choose from uh, in terms of lever. If you can see, there are five holes here, all equating to different uh, angles of the lever. Three down here and two up top. Uh, there's a reason for that. This configuration allows for very fine adjustments in the uh, lever position. So my example here is already in a nice classic position. I just want to uh, tilt it a little bit more downward. I can do that by just removing the lower bolts. Now, Sometimes the spacer here will rotate with the screw. You can stop that by using the uh, supplied wrench. Just insert it like this. And that keeps the spacer from uh, rotating with the, the bolt. And the bolt comes, uh, bolt comes right out. For fine, road, fine uh, adjustments to the uh, angle of the lever, you can leave the top ones in because it rotates around that top bolt. Let me see. Yeah, I kind of like this one. Some fine adjustments to line up the holes. If, if you feel there, are, there is too much resistance while screwing in the bolt, the uh, holes aren't quite lined up. So I would advise you to try again to line up the holes a little bit better so as not to damage the thread on the bolt. Again, if the spacer rotates with the bolt, you can keep it in place with this supply tool. There we are, adjusted perfectly to my liking. In total, there are 26 degrees of freedom between uh, the most downward position and the most upward position. Um, so five steps in between. That's a lot of adjustment. Of course, there is the possibility of mounting the ha handbrake this way, on the upright of the steering column, if, uh, if, if that's your thing. So you can use it in a modern rally or drifting style. But there is more freedom to uh, adjusting the lever. If you want to mount this handbrake a little lower, right by your knee, you can do that and adjust the lever to stand upright so you can uh, pull on it like this. I'll show you how. Again, remove the 
bolts from the lower part of the lever. As you can see, I'm using the tool again. This time, also take out the top two bolts because the lever is gonna come out in one piece. Now the lever is now completely free to be removed. Just wiggle it and it'll come loose. The spaces might fall out, but that's fine. So I took it out like this and I want to mount it straight up. That means I have to rotate it 180 degrees. It can be finicky to get the lever back in, but there is a trick. Just place the first one and pinch the tips just a little, slide it in and screw it in before you add the second one. Now when the first one is in, and you can slide in the second one quite easily, it'll stay in place because it's pinched. And then find the position you want, I want it straight up, that's in the middle position of the bottom three. Bolt goes in. So do the, the top one first, uh, the bottom one last. And again, if there is any sort of resistance on the uh, bolt that you don't like, you don't want to damage your thread. So make sure you are perfectly aligned. Of course, don't forget to secure the other side as well. Both bolts go in. And there we are, ready to go. And of course, Hösekfeld wouldn't be Hösekfeld if there wasn't ample uh, adjustability in the uh, required force. The handbrake comes supplied with three different rubbers, uh, different in length and different in hardness. Let's exchange a couple of them. First, remove the uh, preload locking nut usually finger tight, you can just remove it without any uh, tools. Next comes the uh, preload knurled nut, slides right off. Now I'm going to take out the uh, 28 millimeter hard rubber, which the uh, handbrake comes supplied with. I'm going to install the 19 millimeter hard rubber. That's going to make the uh, action a lot more acute goes in like this. Of course the rubber is uh, a little shorter so we're going to need a little spacer also supplied. Nulled nut goes back on with which you adjust your preload to uh, your liking. I like as little as possible. That uh, looks fine. On goes the little nut that keeps the preload from shifting and there we are that's a very acute handbrake right there of course whenever you uh, adjust anything uh, force related always recalibrate i've adjusted the preload i've adjusted the uh, bushing here so that's gonna uh, change the um, the output of the of the handbrake always recalibrate in smart control this is of course a smart control compatible handbrake. But wait, there's more! In the accessory box you will find these tiny one millimeter spacers. They have a very neat function. You can use them to adjust the preload length without adjusting the preload strength. Let me show you how it works. First you remove the entire braking stack, so off comes the preload locking nut and the preload adjustment knurled nut, there he goes. Spacers, rings and rubbers all come out, including the spring. This spacer inside of the spring keeps the spring from bottoming out. And it also determines the length of your uh, preload throw. And if you add one or two of these rings, you can shorten that throw. 
course one millimeter at the bottom means a couple of millimeters at the top so there will be a lot of adjustment build up the entire stack again always make sure these rings are on either side of any rubber you use that does not apply to the plastic washers preload adjustment nut comes back on quite a bit yep that's fine lock it in place with the locking nut always recalibrate and you're good to go